everyone, it's Rachel Olson, the Education Coordinator at the National Willow Cather Center, here to bring you another Tuesday tour. This week we'll be visiting the St. Juliana Falconieri Catholic Church, a church that has a very interesting history in its own right, but is also meaningful to Willow Cather's time here in Red Cloud. So stay tuned and we'll walk through the building. And as usual, if you are interested in supporting our preservation efforts for this building and all of our other sites, please visit www.willacather.org for more information on how to do so. You can also check out all the other resources we offer online through our website, and be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So without further ado, let's walk through the church. The St. Juliana Falconieri Catholic Church opened in Red Cloud in 1883 and was in operation as Red Cloud's Catholic Church until 1907, when a new larger Catholic church was erected at the corner of 4th and Seward, just a few blocks north here in town. There are very few items in this church that are original. You can see here the pour box and this holy water font are original to the church. The lead windows were reinstalled when the church was restored. Now, originally, the St. Juliana Falconieri Catholic Church did not have pews, did not have a bell. The brick exterior, uh, which is still original, came from the Ludlow Brick Factory, which was uh, located about eight miles north of town. The church didn't even have a dedicated priest. A mission priest would come from Orleans, Nebraska, or Campbell, Nebraska, on the train to deliver mass. And if there was a priest on the train coming here to do a service, there was a special whistle that the train would blow. So parishioners knew that uh, mass was going to happen soon. The church originally had a hay burning stove that would have been in the middle of the sanctuary, just like this stove right here. And the hay heated up really quickly, but it, the, the heat did not last very long. So it was really ideal for just one mass. So you can see this is a very humble church, with the exception of this very beautiful altar, which I will tell you a little bit about in just a moment. You can see that there, well, maybe you can't see, but there is a very sort of crude pattern on these windows because they didn't have stained glass. The Stations of the Cross are not original either. This bishop's chair is original. And this small crucifix in the display case is also original to the church. You might be wondering why this church was important to Willa Cather, because she was not Catholic. Her family wasn't Catholic. But she did have an interest in the Catholic Church. She attended Mass here in Red Cloud uh, from time to time because she was learning Latin and she liked to hear Latin spoken during Mass. She took lessons from a man named William Ducker that lived in town, an Englishman, and she also liked the choir that sang here. Cather's interest in Catholicism and the Catholic Church's role and presence on the frontier comes up in a couple of her later novels, the 1927 novel Death Comes for the Archbishop, as well as her 1931 novel Shadows on the Rock, which is set in Quebec in the 17th century, but it deals a lot with settling a place and being from a different place, much like uh, the pioneers were here. This church also has a connection to Anna Pavelka, or uh, Antonia Shimerda's prototype. When Anna was abandoned by her fiance with a baby, this was where she brought her uh, young daughter to be baptized. This is also where she married her husband, John Pavelka. So there's that significant part of the church's history as well. And the minor family also attended this church. 
The Miner family ran the general store, and they were the prototypes for the Harling family in my Antonia. And there is a connection to the miners and this altar, which the miners had made in Europe for the new Catholic church building. And when the church informed them that the plaque commemorating the donation of the altar would go on the back, not the front of the altar, the miners left the Catholic church and joined the Episcopal church. However, they did uh, leave the, the altar for the church and this was in the new Catholic church building for several decades before it was donated to the Cather Foundation. After this stopped being the Catholic Church in 1907, it became a residence for a family by the name of Barnes, and they had 10 children. So I really can't tell you how they configured this space, and how they fit all of those people in here. But it was uh, descendants of the Barnes family that donated the church to the Cather Foundation. And there you have it. This was a site that was inspiring to Willa Cather in multiple ways, and it has its own sort of rustic charm even to this day. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned next week when we will tour the Minor family home. Thanks so much.